Okay, we got the top of the hour here, everybody. Um, again, welcome. This is our third virtual Thursday of 2017. And topic uh, for today is setting up your account uh, for use with the Nemesis 3 ePCR. So we're going to spend, uh, spend most of our time today in the administration module under the various settings that are relevant to Nemesis 3. Um, before we get started, I do want to mention that our Austin Regional Training Conference that is coming up at the end of February um, is turned out to be our biggest event ever. Um, nearly 50 people have registered, so it is full. However, we have one in San Diego in May from uh, May 9th through May 11th. Couldn't pick a better time to go to San Diego for an event. So if you are interested in becoming an ER expert and taking, play, uh, taking part in our, uh, our three-day event there, um, I'm going to send you the link in the chat window um, to learn more about it. You can you know, click on it and just put it in the background and save it for later. But uh, we'd love to see you there. Whoops, let me get the right link. We would love to see you there. And uh, we're really excited about Austin to have uh, that many people coming to, uh, to learn more about our system. Okay, here's that link coming to you right now. Okay. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get started for what all of you have uh, come here for today. So um, with the new Nemesis 3 PCR, we've got quite a few settings to manage. And so I'm, uh, I'm flying solo today, so I, I have your questions up on a separate window, and I will answer them on the fly as we go. Um, I promise you I won't ignore you. I may either type it back or I'll just announce it and so everybody can hear the answers to those questions. So using Nemesis 3, we've got to go to Administration. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see my screen a little better. And I'm going to just go in kind of a simple logical order, kind of left to right here, top to bottom, um, within the various elements here in administration that directly affect Nemesis 3. That first location is here under Destinations. And so under Destinations, and this has actually been changed just recently, so our knowledge base article needs to be updated to reflect some of these changes, but the con concepts in the fields are essentially the same. So we're going to look at an existing destination because if you're using Nemesis 2, you've, you've already entered all of this information for that particular destination so that information can be exported correctly to the state or your billing company for Nemesis 2. So with Nemesis 3, when your account is activated for Nemesis 3, you'll notice this new field here, Nemesis 3 destination type. That is a required field and you simply select it from your existing facility and select the, pick this from your select, existing facility and select the correct Nemesis 3 destination type. Oh, my screen hasn't changed because I bet it's on pause. Okay, I'm sorry guys. Thanks for that heads up, Edward. Okay, so backing up quickly, we're going to go from what I just did was I went from home to administration To destinations and looking at and in this case we just have one in this account uh, but you're going to have probably more in your account what you will need to do is click on double click on to that destination all of your information will be preserved and you will need to enter the required field of Nemesis 3 destination type so chances are this field will look like this when you go into the module and into the destination information page you'll need to pick the correct destination type for the facility and you're able to enter in other fields here as well grid coordinates provider identifier room suite or apartment if applicable and then hospital designations and then the zone field is a familiar zone that's been in there before and that's all there is to it um, so you don't get any validation errors regarding the destination type any questions at all on Nemesis 3, the destinations? That's the key field right there. All right. And don't forget, it's prompting me here to click Save when you're done. 
I'm starting to get used to a lot of our other pages that don't have a save button anymore. And soon, well, we're going to eventually the system will evolve where as you make entries into the field, into the various fields, there won't be a save button or a floppy disk icon or a save icon throughout the system. So I'm getting in the habit with some of the newer parts of our system. So don't do what I did. Make sure you click save when you're, uh, when you're done making those changes. And so then we'll go back to the destinations page and repeat that for any other destinations um, that are currently in your agency. And then, of course, you would do it. You would uh, do the same for any new destinations that you add into the uh, into the system. OK, next is one of the coolest parts of the new Nemesis 3 PCR. We've got patient forms. All right, so let me run you through this, and you can see it's our new UI, right? So there's a little, there's no save buttons here. Um, it's informative. It's an informative grid, and this is where you're able to add a form from which you can capture signatures. And so we built some in here. We did some training the other day, and so we'll re we'll revisit this one briefly. The test here. So you're going to add a form, and then you'll get a page that looks like this, and you can name your form. And if you have an existing form, say for patient belongings, patient refusals, uh, transfer of care, HIPAA forms, you can copy that text, that syntax from the exact existing form and paste it into here and it will appear on the electronic form that I'll show you uh, later on uh, when we take a peek into the ePCR itself. Um, Jennifer, how did I get the forms? Let me show you. Let me clear this out. We'll go back, good question. So I'm in administration. And we were just in destinations under incident settings. And so now I'm going to go to patient forms right underneath it. We'll click once and that page will open. And then from there I can double click onto any row um, describing the patient form or I can click the edit icon over on the far right. So let me show you the example of the HIPAA form. So the name and Anything within the new ePCR, both for settings and the PCR itself, uh, when you see a red asterisk, that means that it's a required field. And so it does require some kind of information in each of these fields. Name, form contact, or content, excuse me, reasons. Now the reasons, uh, that simply indicates when you're going to want to use this form. Now, it lists the reasons and it provides that information in the main grid back here. So you can check any of the boxes where this form would be used. The disposition is more critical. The reason I say that is by selecting the dispositions, and this is found on the first page of the EPCR, the first panel and the first section. And so when you select any of those dispositions, and you'll see this in the actual EPCR, and we should be we should have time to visit those today. So, whatever ones you check here, this form becomes a mandatory form for that EPCR, and the report writer will have to go in and complete that form, but only for any of these that are checked. So, for example, on a HIPAA form, we know that anytime we um, do a refusal. We need to do. We need to provide them that HIPAA form, and you could do it that if they're evaluated and no treatment or transports required, um, patient reviews, evaluation, and care. So if I select any of those dispositions during my uh, writing of the EPCR, this form becomes required. So keep that in mind under dispositions. Reasons just identify when you would use it. Disposition drives whether or not it's required. Now. Even if you don't make it, if you leave this blank and don't check any boxes, that's okay. You can add any form, any of these, in this case, five forms that we've created. You can add any of those five forms to any EPCR um, if they're not required. Status active means that it will show up in the form. In the, I'm, I'm sorry, it will show up in the EPCR itself. And then the signature requirements, there's four possibilities here, patient and representative. So as you're looking at your existing forms that you use, whether they're paper or even electronic now, look at the forms and see what signatures are required. Usually the patient, crew, another healthcare provider, and or other or witness, especially for like refusals. And you drive which signatures are required here. 
Then once we've done uh, creating the form, we click Save, and it becomes part of our form list here on the grid. And I'll show you, as we do an EPCR on some of these elements, uh, time permitting today, I'll show you how they all come into play. But does this make sense on creating a form? Any questions or concerns there on creating a form? It's pretty slick and it works great. And it really is tablet friendly too. Okay, seeing no questions. Let's go to the next one. So back to admin. Next up is required fields and customizations. So we'll click into that. And we're going to skip over all of the enfers, the, the custom fields and the enfer section and scroll right to the bottom for Nemesis 3. Okay, first two check boxes. First one I'm going to uncheck and then recheck. You'll get when you check it for the first time, this enables our frequent flyer feature. What this allows you to do is if you collect, if you go in and do an EPCR and you put in the patient's first name, last name, or date of birth, it will look through previous EPCRs to see if that person has appeared in a previous PCR. And if they've appeared in more than one, it will look at the latest entry uh, chronologically, um, knowing that uh, meds and patient history and physicians, all of that are subject to change. So instead of going with an older EPCR where that patient may have appeared, it will look at the most recent one. And it will ask you if you would like to fill the EPCR with that patient data. The other three fields that it looks at is driver's license number, state, and date of birth. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you the link. And what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to send you the link to our current database of knowledge base articles. And you can refer to them at your convenience later on, knowing that things are constantly evolving. And so that one I just mentioned to you earlier uh, about the Nemesis 3 settings for destinations, the concept is the same, but the screenshots are a little bit different. Okay, so keep in mind that will be a little, that will be somewhat changed. Um, but this is our library of knowledge base articles pertaining to Nemesis 3, and most of them. Um, I've been written for the setup component right now of which we're talking about. In the frequent flyer, it also ex is explained there as well. And hopefully I'll be able to uh, replicate, uh, replicate this today and show you how it actually works in a PCR. All you have to do is when you see this uh, disclaimer is to click Enable. And now your system's ready to go for using frequent flyer. Okay, not values. There's an article in, in the library that I sent you that talks about not values. By checking this box, it allows you to collect the various not values that Nemesis talks about. And those are right here in the Nemesis uh, 3 schema. Let me get there. I was reading it earlier, so. Okay, the not values are right here. I'm gonna highlight them so that you can see them. And I just wanna point these out that there's not applicable, not recorded, and not reporting. So the not applicable means it's not relevant to that actual EMS event or that, that, that data field. Not recorded is the data element is considered applicable to the EMS event, was, but was left blank. So our software will auto-populate it with not recorded. Not reporting means that the data element is not collected by the EMS agency or state this not value does not apply to where the national elements are required. So if the field is a required field per the NEMSIS three definitions, um, you won't be able to use not reporting, but you can use not applicable and not, not recorded. And so checking that enables that for the various fields that allow for those not values. And if you're, Really wanting to learn uh, learn more about the Nemesis 3 schema as well as the, some of these definitions. I'm going to send you the, uh, the database dictionary um, link as well. And it's very exciting reading, let me tell you. But it is actually, while it may not be exciting, it is interesting and will help you better understand uh, Nemesis 3 and how they define different things. 
um, within the system. A lot of what we're talking about today in, is the, under the demographics data set, and you can see there are 35 required elements uh, for the demographics, and a lot of that is configured in what we're doing right now. Okay, so back to the Nemesis 3 required field section. Enable frequent flyer, we've checked that. We've checked collect not values. And then here, um, select ICD-10 codes. Well, there's thousands of these codes. And what this allows you to do is to go in by name. So I'm going to type in cardiac. It will automatically filter any ICD-10 codes with the word cardiac in it. And then I can go through and select the ones that I want to appear on pick lists throughout the EPCR that shows these ICD-10 codes. So in other, in other words, in a, in a, in a, instead of having just this massive list that you have to scroll through and do a search for, you can just condense that list down by checking these boxes to the ones that are applicable for your agency. And many of these, you're going to notice a lot of these are for in-hospital because Cardiac septal defect acquired. Well, the patient might tell you they have that, but that's not something we're going to be able to diagnose in the field. An intracardiac thrombosis, probably the same thing. So this allows you to compress that list. Um, uh, and so the, the report writer doesn't have to sort through or search through a really long uh, drop-down list. Or even when you filter it by the word cardiac, there's still quite a few to pick from. This at least reduces their choices and allows them to speed through the EPCR more rapidly. Protocol codes, these are also Nemesis 3 codes, and you can select the ones that are relevant to your agency. This is a much shorter list, thankfully. And so you can select the ones that are applicable to your agency. So if you have standing orders, if you have um, actual protocols that you follow uh, uh, for your agency, you can just select the ones that are applicable to your agency. And in the protocol section of the EPCR, uh, just those will appear in the drop-down list. So the, they don't have to scroll past or search through ones that are not relevant for your organization. Okay, the next section is medications and procedure configuration for each certification level. So within our system, and I'll show you this in a little bit, we have the various Nemesis 3 certifications. And you're not adding the certifications here. You're just adding a configuration for those certifications. And what you're configuring are the medications and procedures that level of certification can provide. And so what this does is when you go to select an individual that has that certification, their list of available medications and procedures compress down to only what you select here in this configuration. So for example, let me go in and actually edit the student. Oops, not delete, edit, excuse me. So here, I've selected that as a student. Again, that's one of the NEMSIS three certification levels, so student, you know, ride-alongs doing their clinicals. I've selected only the meds that they can administer. And again, think of this for medic, for EMT. Um, if you have a nurse practitioner, you can add, um, use, uh, add that as well. And any procedures, and it's coming from the master procedures list. Okay, and notice the expand and collapse arrow. So this is by category and then subcategory, or excuse me, category and then actual procedure. And then you can select those. So then we'll go do a, we'll go use a student in one of our uh, examples, and I'll show you how it reduces the choices based on those uh, those certification levels. And so we've got them configured for seven of the possible certification levels within our system. So far, so good. Any questions to this point? And just keep an eye out on the questions, uh, questions window there. OK, excellent. OK, at this point in, in, in this section, incident settings, that's all we need to do. Um, for the in the incident settings, okay. Next up, we're going to bump over to the to this side of the page under certifications, under personnel, under settings. So we're going to click on settings, and you're going to notice that we have a, a certification type. I like to think of it as a category here. We have a certification category called Nemsis certifications. 
There's a star of life next to it. And so the and you'll notice that both the trash can and the edit icon are dimmed. These are hard coded and can't be edited um, by the user at this time. We're looking at this because this is the master list and anything with the star of life next to it indicates that it is an Emsys code. But we all know, I mean, all of us that are joined on today, all of our agencies don't have all of these. So at some point, these will probably be user configurable for you can remove the ones that aren't applicable to your agency. But for right now, we've got the whole Nemsys 3 list. All right, and any of these certifications can be assigned to an individual. So how do you do that? Again, back out to administration. Under our personnel list. And we're going to pick a person. So I'm going to pick Greg. And I'm going to scroll down on the personal info tab. I'm going to scroll down. And here it says EMS certification level. If you're Nemesis 2, this is a drop down. Okay. Nemesis 3, it's a hyperlink that takes you to that individual certifications tab. So it's a quick link from personal info to certifications. And so what I want to do is I'm going to add a new certification. So before I do that, let's clear this one out. And so I can add an actual new one here. Okay. Add new certification. You enter the granted date. And this applies, so a little sidebar here. This is the same process you'll do for any other certifications in your agency, such as driver's license, which you can consider a certification because it does expire, or at least your annual check of driver's license. Um, certain fire certifications, although not many, um, expire and can be renewed. And our system allows you to do that and track when things are expiring and uh, if or if they have expired. So we're going to focus just on EMS certifications, NEMSIS 3. Certification name, so Greg is a medic, and he's a medic under the 2009 curriculum. We're going to grant this to him, say he earned it back on January 1st of this year, and as we know, it's good typically with National Registry for two years, and often the expiration date is in March 31st. I can add notes. I can also scan and upload that certifi certification as well. Okay, so we're going to add, add Greg, and now his certification is medic. Now remember, any of those procedures and medications I assigned at the paramedic, 2009 paramedic certification level, if I have Greg go and do any procedures or administer any medications in the EPCR, only those applicable to the 2009 paramedic standard will appear for him. And you can do that for all of your... All of your uh, your EMS personnel in the in the uh, system. Questions on that? Does that make sense? All right. Seeing none, no, no typing. I'll assume that you got it down pat. It's pretty easy. Okay. So that takes care of um, certifications and adding EMS certifications. And the other thing that we need to go back and visit and I, is under the personnel list again. We're going to go back to Greg. And this is optional information. So it'll be up to you as an agency whether or not you want to enter this information. None of it is required, but in order for us to be a, a NEMSIS compliant, we have to include this. So this is additional NEMSIS 3 configuration fields. And so NEMSIS 3 allows you to document their immunization record, foreign language skills, their degree of study, which means level of education or their um, major, basically, for any degree associates or above, motor vehicle license type, personnel, their race, and any other job responsibilities. Simply clicking the add item will allow you to pick from a Nemesis dropdown and select their actual degree of study. So again, in that link I sent you for the XML schema, it appears in the demographic set under personnel. And you can see down here, 
uh, dem set personnel dot 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, all of those are in this page here. So to learn more about any of those particular elements, you can see almost all of them. If not, I believe all of them are optional. And the drop, the, our drop down list will match this list here. Otherwise, we wouldn't be NEMSIS 3 compliant. Okay, next up for configuration is going to be your apparatus list. In the apparatus list, you're going to go in and edit. So I'm going to go in and edit Medic 1. And you will see the red fields, some of which are Enfers re required fields, others are Nemesis 3 required fields. And we identify it as best as possible here that the vehicle type, transport type, default primary role, and default level of care are all Nemesis 3 required fields. So make sure you update your, we don't replace or change any of your apparatus, but just when you up, upgrade your account to Nemesis 3, these are changes that are going to occur. And the system will still let you do a complete a report, but you'll get validation errors that you're missing these fields. Okay. And that's under administration and the apparatus list for those uh, four required Nemesis 3 fields. Oh yeah, we got to go back here. I almost forgot. Same, same, same process. We've got the apparatus information, and now we also have the crew information. And so this isn't the personnel you're assigning to the apparatus. This is the level of certification on the apparatus. So if Medic 1, we have at least one medic. And they're uh, applicable for, because this unit, for example, runs 911 traffic runs inner facilities, or I'm sorry, um, non-transport non, non calls, so um, non-EMS non calls. And then this is for like inner facility transports. Okay, and then you can add another. And this just sets your, uh, your essentially your minimum, oops, minimum staffing certifications for each of those vehicles. Clear that one up. Oops, I deleted the wrong one. And the other one is going to be an EMT basic. So that's basically your crew for that unit. And again, you'll notice that with our new UI, there's no save button here. As you make an entry, it automatically saves. Okay, the next next up here is in demographics. Okay. It's going to be under EMS agency settings. And you can fill in all of this information. The red fields are required. And a lot of this is just it's data entry. And you can see some of these not values here that have, that have popped up um, because Nemesis, these are optional fields and they do accept not values. And it's just a lot of this is kind of initially set it and forget it. And, um, but it will require, as of now, it will require you to update your, your call volume, transports, and patient contacts and billable calls here in these fields. Um, on an annual basis. Once you're done, this is one of the uh, older pages, so you'll have to click Save, and it will update it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is visit Stations. Under Stations, there's Really just one field, and it's not even a required field, but you should be aware of it, is EMS station type. So these are fields that uh, Nemesis provides, and you can select it. Again, it's not a required field, but if you export your demographic data to the state, they may want this. And so 
this allows you to pick from it. And so those are all the areas in the administration module that you need to visit in order to set your account up to work properly with Nemesis 3 and to minimize the chances of validation errors based on the data that you do at the beginning of uh, setting up your account for Nemesis 3. Those, the links that I gave you um, will take you to a review of the knowledge base article, a review of what we talked about today via knowledge base articles. So I know, you know to go through it like we did and you wanna make sure you, you replicate and be able to make sure you don't forget any, any of these elements. Following that in that page that I gave you from top to bottom, will go in the same order I essentially went through today. I know I, I kind of went from station back and forth here a little bit, but uh, essentially we covered everything there that needs to be done when it comes to um, setting up your account for Nemesis 3. So any questions? We're not gonna we're not gonna end the session early. I just wanted to we're gonna go into an actual EPCR so you can see where these come into play. But any questions on setting this up? Okay, looking good so far. All right, let's go do an EPCR. And, and I'm gonna focus specifically on some of the elements that we set up in administration. So I'm not, this isn't going to be our start to finish EPCR because we're gonna do that on the next Virtual Thursday where we deep dive into every, each of the sections. I just wanna show you where some of these come into play. So we'll start an incident like we normally would. What I want to do before we do that, I want to clear this out. Let's start in two new patients here so you can see it in action. Okay, so we would start our, our PCR as we normally would in the, the one heads up, well, We'll hit that next week, actually. There's one thing on page three that we'll talk about, but I'm gonna save that for next week. So as we proceed through the EPCR, once you get the basic five, we're gonna click next, and that's gonna take us to the Nemesis 3 PCR. So it looks, it looks, feels, and functions a lot differently than our Nemesis 2 um, EPCR. New UI, no need to click any save buttons. The system is saving as you proceed through the EPCR. So looking at the elements that we set up in administration earlier, you're going to see the panel buttons here. So we call these panels, and then within each panel on the right is a section. So in this case, the response crew panel has three sections. Responding unit, crew, and delay types. So Medic 1 was on the scene. I'm just going to go through and, and fill some of these out. Okay, let's talk about incident patient disposition. Remember, based on what I selected for my forms, whatever I choose here, if for that form this is a required, I selected this disposition, it then makes that form required. So I'm going to use patient treated and transported by this EMS unit. And then when we, when we get down to files and signatures, Okay, it will show me those forms that are required. Also, because it's dynamic and, and saves as we go, the system now knows because I selected this, the patient was treated and transported, it wants a destination, so it went to red light, and we have forms that are required, so it also is red light. So you can see as what you're configuring on the front end makes the workflow here infinitely easier and in making sure you capture things that are, are essential. And if you join us next for the next Virtual Thursday, I'll explain this initial patient acuity because I know I'm kind of an old school medic, so we didn't have where we had to select this, but there is a document that NHTSA put out that I'll share with everybody next week that kind of helps guide you as far as how you make the decisions here for patient initial patient acuity. Okay, crew. So what will, what's, what will happen is when I select the crew up here, or the apparatus up here, it will auto-populate with the crew members. And that's new and it may not take effect on this EPCR because this EPCR was started before we made that change. So I'm going to add two people that I want on this vehicle that I know will give us some good responses later on as far as 
Do, do, do. Okay. Oh, there we go. It actually did it. It sometimes, uh, it does take a second occasionally. So what I would recommend, yeah, this is good. Okay. So what I'm going to recommend everybody is this. Um, be patient and teach your crews to give it a second, especially if you have a, a, a questionable internet connection. Give it a second for the, the server to receive all of this, the data and the changes, because what it hap it did it. When I select the crew, it automatically populates the crew members with those true those two crew members. And I knew I had done that back on basic four. So whoever you put on the apparatus back in basic four, and then you select that apparatus here it will populate them along with the report writer. And that's me doing the report writing. And then of course the delay types, we'll talk about that next week. Don't have to click save. I can go down to my next panel under patient info. And I am going to show you how selecting The person should pop up. We'll give it a second if it's on, if it's working as it should, because I know he's a patient in here. Name, last name, date of birth, and I should get a pop up that will indicate that you want to fill this PCR with the previous ePCR. So this where we are in the process today of doing the. Um, the uh, an update to the system and so that's possibly why this is not showing but a little pop-up will appear that will indicate hey you want to fill this with this we found this patient Do you want to fill him into this epcr you can click yes or click no okay that's a race that's a required field once you enter all the required fields That page will go green as it did. Okay, excellent. All right. Let's take a look at patient care. Again, I'm bouncing around just to show you the areas that we just set in admin where they come into play here. So we know procedures and medications. Let's click on procedures. Okay, so who so as we look here, I want you to see the procedure list. Okay, pretty extensive list, right? And I can expand it. I haven't selected an individual yet. So I know Hetty, she is a student. And so when I select her, automatically selects her as student. I go down to procedures and only the procedures that she can administer appear on this list. And I had preset this. So instead of everything appearing, only the ones and not values um, and the pertinent negatives appear on this list. So we need to have her at least do one procedure. And she held the airway open. And we'll get into all of those, those details next week. So this is an example where I have a, uh, a red triangle, warning triangle, indicating that I missed a required field. So what? let's see, what did I do? Okay, got the date, got the procedure. And I know what was the procedure successful or not. So let's go yes, and now that should give me a green. So you can see, just like our ENFRS report, we're giving you... Instead of horizontally red and green lights, we're giving you vertical red and green lights. And now we should be good to go. And we are. All right, let's talk destinations. All right, it wants final patient acuity. And like I said, um, on our next virtual Thursday, which is actually two weeks from today, uh, let me rephrase that. It's our first and third th 
Thursday of every month. So the next one will be, I believe, March 2nd. I will double check the date on that, but I believe it's March 2nd. Okay, transport mode from scene. All right, destination. Okay, because I filled in, I have all this, it will pre-fill everything for me. So again, another reason to have that all set up well. As medics, we don't want to spend, we already spend probably, I know I did, and this was a few years ago, I spent more time often doing my run report than treating for the patient sometimes. So treating the patient sometimes. Okay, so far so good. Filled in, filled in. Hospital capability. Notice because I selected that back on the checkboxes in administration, it auto-filled that for me. Love it. Oh, anyway, yep. And, and again, be patient because there's so much going on underneath the hood on these pages. And if you're inclined to do so, if you click F12, I can't do it in Safari. I, I can do it in Firefox, but Safari doesn't have it. In, but if you click F12 and click on the network tab um, on your browser, you'll see the activity going on underneath the hood here. And there's a lot happening as you go field to field. Data is being sent to and from our server um, to one, accept the data, and two, based on what you select, trigger other required fields or drop downs. Okay. So here's our files and signature page. Of course, you can upload files like ECG strips, photos, and things like that that you would share with the facility. Now down here, that disposition back up here under response and crew, There, there we go. That because I selected this disposition, I know that these four forms are required. Okay, but I can also add a form, the fifth one, patient refusal, if I wanted to, but this wasn't a refusal. We'll go into the HIPAA form. And there's your form. Patient name is auto-filled. Signature. Oops. Actually, I got to go back, guys. I went too fast. Don't go fast like I do. Okay, it saved it. Status is signed. Okay, so that's this form. Then by clicking next, takes you to the next form. And you can enter the crew. If it were you that signed it, autofill. Give it a second and you'll see it go a few seconds ago. It means it's been saved. We'll click next. And those two forms are good to go. And of course, then when you get to the end, if there's any, you'll see that there is a red warning here and a red warning on summary. I cannot authorize it yet. So the it still says I have patient, all patient pages must be completed. So once I were to go and complete those other two forms, then I am able to authorize and complete this report. All right. So again, we flew through this PCR on our next virtual Thursday. Um, we're going to go through it, you know, section by section and kind of talk about each of the elements. Uh, but that today's a uh, virtual Thursday training session was to focus on getting your account set up and then how what you set up in administration affects the actual ePCR. So I do know that our uh, future, future sessions um, will include doing the PCR, um, assessing any kind of validation errors that, that come your way, and then uh, later on we'll do uh, setting up for a billing export. So I got a question from Doug. Okay, regarding when a state validation error comes up, can there be a link set into the error message to take us to the data field we are uh, within the patient uh, PCR that needs to be corrected and filled in? We are working on that because what we want it to do is what you've come to expect here under Authorize in the Enfers report, so the full, the full incident, it tells you right here what is required in order to get this all green. And so that concept we want to apply here as well. And as we continually update this module, which is being updated every single two weeks, it's been it's been 
basically our top priority. And so um, as we move forward, that kind of functionality will appear with, with links. And I believe some links actually do appear um, for administrators right now. I think that's you have to have administrative privileges to, to have that, but we're going to work it to where, because I have seen some links on this page either where it's a validation error or a, um, a validation error or a um, incomplete data like this one is. Because what, what Doug's saying, everybody, is that by clicking this link, it automatically takes me to, or at least multiple links, where I need to go in and correct it in order to successfully complete this EPCR. So it's coming. I know that. Okay. Can you do Alabama trip reporting in this program? Okay. So Jennifer, explain a little bit about trip reporting. Are you talking about mileage and things like that? And you're welcome, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Let's see if Jennifer responds back. I want to see uh, if she means like for billing and for mileages. Okay, we'll go back to that. So if she's if she's wondering about this, um, and many of you may be wondering about it. Under the billing panel, under response and transportation section, there is a whole slew of data elements that you can enter up to and including mileages here. So does, Jennifer, does that answer your question? Oh, excellent, it does, super. Okay, that's the place to do it. All right, and so many of you right now, so here's the deal with, with the NEMSIS-3 PCR. Right now, Ohio is reporting, Washington State, and uh, other states will follow along. To know when your state, and i got to find it. It's going to take me a second to find that link. But to know when your state is going to require it, and I have also found that some of the data here isn't exactly 100% um, correct, but under the nemsis.org website, let's take a look here. What I want to see is the my timeline for migration. There is a actual interactive page that shows the status of each state. And let me just be smart about it and do a search. Okay, that's version two. So it's under support version three. There we go. State and territory information. So you can take a peek here and click and see the status of your state regarding reporting. All of the contact information for your um, state data collection agency, in this case in Arizona, it's the Bureau of Emergency Medical Services Data and Quality Assurance section, and probably links to any other additional state fields that they're, in, that they're adding to NEMSIS-3 and then dates that talk about when you have to uh, begin reporting. And I would verify with your state that these are still accurate. And the reason I say that is because I did notice we were working with another customer and the, uh, the information wasn't exactly correct. But this gives you submitting version 3, documents available, they have a plan, or limited progress. So just kind of investigate it, and when in doubt, just contact your state directly. They'll be able to give you, you know, the straight scoop on it. All right. Well, it is a rare instance where we actually end early on our virtual Thursdays due to either the topic or the questions. But I'll be, I will stay here until the top of the hour um, to answer any questions that may come up as you kind of explore. Um, I want to thank everybody. I know, you know, your days are busy. So thank you very much for joining us on uh, this third virtual Thursday of 2017. And I will verify our next date. Oh, Mike's going to hit me on the NEMSIS property classification. That very getting on basic info three. Mike, stay tuned for the next. <laughs> That's been one thing our trainers have been talking about, too. 
stay, uh, I'm going to have you stand by. I'll, I'll go over it briefly now, but we're going to go into it a little more in depth because with the release in the system, um, the new update today, actually, that's going to change and make life a little easier for you. So we're going to, uh, let me visit that in a minute, but I want to confirm our next day for, um, for the virtual Thursday, uh, the first Thursday in March. And of course, uh, let me get my other calendar without opening up my, yes, it's going to be March, uh, March 2nd. I was right. The first, uh, First Thursday in March will be March 2nd. That's our next virtual Thursday, guys. So mark your calendars for that. And, of course, you can register for that um, directly uh, from the in-system announcements that we have uh, before each virtual Thursday. All right. Okay, so what Mike's talking about is a unique, a very unique field. It's in basic three, although it is a Nemesis three field. So what he's talking about is right here. You've got property use, and then you've got the Nemesis property classification. This is indeed a required field um, for Nemesis 3, and it now pops up as required so we don't get validation errors. Okay, so what I want to check real quick here is when we save it, does it auto-populate? Because what I want to see, give me just a moment, guys. I'm going to open my outlook because we had a bulletin on this, and I want to give you the, the, the correct information. So give me just a second. I'm going to have that open on another window. So this, this is a unique field in our system because it is a, well, it looks like a pretty small field that you can make an entry, right? Well, as you make the entry, it doesn't actually save the number 45. Okay. It actually, it actually allows, it's like a Google search. As you enter a string of characters, it will auto suggest Let's see if I can do, let's do Y. It will auto-suggest, and you have to do two characters, any Nemesis property classification with that string of characters in it. Okay, so give me a second. And it is a required field, and it is a frustrating field a little bit because you've got to kind of type the you know, keyword, or if you know the code itself, which when there's so many of them, good luck with that, right? So... Let me um, let me look and see. I want to communicate to you the jargon that was sent out today on that particular field, so I can explain it correctly. Hang in there with me. Okay, on basic three, the Nemesis property classification field, this field here, is now required. If the account has enters, filling in the property use field will set a default value for the Nemesis property classification, but you can always modify it. So if it doesn't have Fire Station in there, but it does probably please, <laughs> I'm testing this for the first time because this deploy just released, you know, hours ago. Yes. So it, we, we have basically mapped the, the closest Nemesis property classification to the Enfers. So Enfers is a 429 multifamily dwelling. In Nemesis, it's an apartment as a place of occurrence of the external cause. Now, we could type in apartment, and I could change it as well. So it's what we think is the best best option, and it will preclude you most of the time from having to go into this. But if you don't like that response, that that what we call a mapped response, go ahead and type in a keyword like apart, like I just did, and you'll be able to find pick the one. Oh no, this was kitchen in the apartment as a place. So it actually took place in the kitchen. We want to be more specific, so I can select that one instead. So great question, Mike. And that actually is before to this day, it wasn't required. And, but we did have some questions on it, and it was uh, a little frustrating for us because, like, wow, that's a unique field. But it's cool because um, it does, you know, limit the length of the drop down because I don't know how many actual possible responses are on this list, but it's a lot. And so we did our best to map it to, to simplify your lives um, when you're going to go do this report, especially now that this is a required field because we were getting validation errors uh, from states. Uh, because uh, this field wasn't filled in. So 
um, please, as you work through this, as you, as you, if you encounter any issues, um, if you encounter any challenges, reach out to us. The best, absolute best way to get us is through support at emergencyreporting.com. And I say that only because by emailing us through that, it, it gets it put, gets put into a queue, and we have the documentation that we need. Phone calls are good. Um, we it goes through the same. It goes into the same. Um, uh, support ticket management tool that we use, but having it in black and white and even screenshots are wonderful. It just, we're working with a couple of customers now and they've just been incredible as far as helping us refine this and make it even more user-friendly. So um, don't hesitate to uh, to reach out to us. Okay, yeah, Mike, you're very welcome. And yeah, I'm glad it's mapped too. Second question. Okay, I know, I think, I think I know the answer to this, but I wanna make sure. Under administration exports, I don't have an option to do Nemesis 3 export. Is that because I wasn't quite set yet? That's exactly right. And you, your account has not been. Um, so let me ask you this, Mike. Have you, has your agency been turned on for Nemesis 3? Yes, obviously it is. Otherwise, you wouldn't have had that. Um, so yes, the billing has not been turned on um, currently. Um, let me rephrase that. You don't have billing turned on. You may have billing turned on because we can do that. But we haven't turned on the... Nemesis 3 export yet for that exact reason. I was not quite re- not right, uh, quite receiving the Nemesis 3 data, so you are exactly correct. Sorry, some of my brain put the word billing export into there because I was just working in that earlier today. So yeah, you're right. Yep. Okay, Jennifer. All right, questions are coming in. Excellent. Okay, in the state of Ohio, EMS agency um, specialty service capability and patient monitoring capability are required. Where do we enter those in ER? Okay, I will look. I will. I will look at that, uh, Jennifer. Let me let me see if I can get a quick, relatively quick response for you. EMS agency specialty service capability and patient monitoring capability. All right, I'm going to check one location first that I think it's going to be. Um, before I do that, anybody, any other questions on how the EPCR, what you've done in administration? comes into play in the actual EPCR itself. Okay, I went just type them in and I'll answer them and I'm not leaving until we get them all answered. So it is likely, I'm guessing right now because I haven't seen those fields, but I'm guessing it's under EMS agency settings and it's specialty service capability. Yep, there it is. EMS agency specialty service capabilities right there and patient monitoring capabilities are right here. Yep. So that should cover you there uh, quite nicely, Jennifer. All right, and then Mike on billing. Um, So billing, that's something um, you have to let us know. Um, So we have billing criteria all set up for certain Ohio customers, not yet for Iowa based on your billing company. So what we need to do is com- you need to communicate with support, let them know who your billing company is. I know some do internal billing and we can work with you on that too, to set that up. When, Cause you, when I say internal billing is that you have, you manage all your billing in house with another software product. Um, and so we, we, we've set that up for another department in Iowa and that can be done. We just need to have that conversation with support. Guys, this has been great. Thank you. Uh, thank you for a good hour. And again, thank you for taking time out of your day to do this. Uh, if you have more questions as you read some of those knowledge base articles, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, my email address is tom at emergencyreporting.com. Um, you can also get answers by emailing support at emergencyreporting.com. I'll put that into the uh, chat window here. And I hope to see all of you at the March 2nd uh, Virtual Thursday, where we're going to deep dive into all the sections into the EPCR. All right, everybody. Um, I'll linger for another minute or two in case a question comes up. But you are free to get on with your day. Um, I hope it's a good one. And uh, just have a safe day. And we'll see you in a few weeks. And uh, Jennifer and Mike, you're very welcome. Thanks for the comments there. All right, that's a wrap for today. Take care, everybody.